All right, guys. Gonna be shooting a Glock 19 a little bit, having some fun. Let's go for it. All right, guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And uh, today we're gonna be talking about Glock 19. And uh, what's funny is I was looking back through some of our older videos and just trying to sort of uh, figure out, you know, other things we could do and different directions we could go. And, you know, always just kind of reassessing what we're doing. And I realized that all these years we've talked about Glock 19 and we've never done a, just a regular, just hanging out the range shooting type of Glock 19 video. And the Glock 19 ends up being one of those handguns that a lot of different guns get compared to uh, inadvertently, whether it's just because a lot of people prefer 19s or because they're so predominant and they're just out there. But no matter how you really want to cut it, the Glock 19 is a staple handgun and they really are um, pretty much the compact handgun that a lot of other handguns are compared to. Um, there are probably some guns out there that I like a little bit better than the 19. Uh, you're always going to find a handgun that fits your hand a little bit better than a 19. Uh, you're going to find one that has like a bore axis that you like a little bit better than a 19, maybe a little bit better trigger, uh, you know, maybe some different types of uh, features that you might prefer over the 19. But when you get back to the beans and bullets of the situation, it's hard to beat a Glock 19. You know, they're the most unisex looking dang things. And, uh, they're ugly, but they work, okay? They, uh, they take a variety of different magazines. There's a ton of different aftermarket parts uh, for the Glock series of pistols. Uh, the 19 is kind of what we call the Goldilocks zone for Glock. So with the Glock Model 17, you have a full size. With the Glock Model 19, you have the middle of the line. With the Glock Model 26, you have the tiny gun. So the smaller you get, you get subcompact, this is a compact, and you get the full size. The smaller frame will always take the larger magazine of the model above it. So in this case, those were a couple of 15-shot uh, metal line Glock magazines. They'll also take a 17-shot, and this is the magazine that goes in a Glock 17. And they'll also take a 33-round uh, magazine, okay? These are the ones they run in like Glock 18s and things like that. And these also, you know, you see a lot of these magazines being ran in a pistol caliber carbine and things like that. So why, why is a Glock 19 such a successful gun? I mean, it's compact, it's lightweight, it works, and there's a ton of aftermarket accessories. Another reason that the Glock uh, does so well, in my opinion, is because all of the, the magazines that they make, I mean, these are not aftermarket magazines. These 33 round magazines are a, a factory Glock magazine that is made to run in this gun, and they do run, which I'm about to show you. And you also have the ability uh, a lot of people that make pistol caliber carbines, if they haven't made some type of pri proprietary magazine, they will always want to make a gun except lot magazines because this magazine works, they're available, they're reasonably inexpensive. And guys, no matter how you cut it, people can hate on Glocks all they want, but people like to have the higher capacity magazines to be able to run in their pistol caliber carbines. It just makes training a lot more fun and a lot more useful. So um, it is a nine millimeter. And uh, this particular gun is equipped with Trigicon HDs. Uh, these are the DPU sights, and this is an orange front. They also make these sights in a yellow front. And this particular Glock 19, I think Chad owns like two or three 19s, and I've got three or four 19s. Uh, between my wife and I, we own about four of them. Chad, like I said, he owns several. Uh, the Glock 19s are basically, this is the Honda Civic of guns. That's the best way to look at it. It works, it's reliable, it retains its value pretty well, it'll always get you there, it'll always work. You don't ever have to worry about not take, driving a Honda Civic off the lot and having a problem. So that, a Glock 19 is the same way. This is a gun that you can get in, it's a daily driver, you carry it, you use it, you throw it in the truck, you carry it around, and it's just a good, reliable companion. It's not gonna win any beauty contests, but that's not what it's there for. So, 
that's my take on Glock 19s, and Chad is going to shoot a little bit as well here in a moment. Um, this particular 19 uh, is one that I carry in my truck. So this is a, this is a gun that I keep uh, handy. Let's run one of these high cap mags here. <laughs> All right, again. <laughs> That's a lot of rounds. <laughs> if you can't get the job done with that, there's a problem. All right, this gun, uh, it does just have a standard trigger in it, so I haven't really upgraded anything on this gun. It's a standard Generation 3 uh, 19. All I've done is uh, replace the sights with night sights. All right, 15-shot mag. The gun is shooting a little bit high for me. All right. Try a couple of uh, sodas and maybe some long range shots. And guys, the whole point of this video, this is not really intended to be a review. I really hate the word review. Guys, we're just out here shooting the dang thing. I'm not trying to shoot this thing precisely. I'm just out here shooting the crap out of this gun and just having a little fun with it. I can't really think of anything else that needs to do than that, guys. I mean, reliably, you know, it works. I'll try a couple of longer range shots back there, about 35, 40 yards away. All right, we'll try some adventurous shots back there, about 75 yards. This is where that, uh, that, those deep use sights are really good for the close range work because you can really get on that front sight quick for the up close and personal stuff. But at longer range, that's where you're gonna see a little bit uh, loss of accuracy. But for a combat handgun or a carry handgun, the deep use sights, in my opinion, are the best because they just pick up really well. I mean, you can just come right out of the gun and. I mean, you're on it. And then at longer range, again, we'll try a 75 yard gong just to have a little fun. Not terrible. I mean, considering that, in my mind, a handgun is not really useful at super long ranges. You wouldn't shoot something that far away, but it's still fun to know that you can reach out a little bit with a handgun if you need to. All right. See, these things are also useful to get all the brass off your table, see? There you go. All right. One more big stick here, and then I'm gonna turn it over and let Chad have a shot or two. Um, I'm not trying to shoot precisely, guys. I'm just wrapping these things out of here. Um, 
Glocks do inherently have some pretty good accuracy potential. Um, and one thing I'll mention is that uh, the newer Glocks, the Gen 5s, we did do a video on the uh, Gen 5 uh, Glock 19. And one thing that the newer Glocks have over this particular Gen 3 19 is they have the new Marksman barrel. And we have found that uh, a gun does shoot exceptionally well. So they, I would say, dare, I would dare say that they might be a little more accurate than the older Glocks. So that might be something to consider for somebody who's looking at a 19. Uh, and those of you that don't know, I mean, the Glocks have gone through a lot of changes. So, you know, have like different generations of Glocks. Uh, the Gen 3s are going to be probably your most uh, commonly encountered guns. And then they went through kind of a process where they, where they did the Gen 4 with like the uh, dual recoil uh, system in there that's supposed to help with like recoil. Uh, they also offer the 19 and a compensated model, which I'm not even sure if they even make the compensated model anymore. I used to have a compensated 19 and I got rid of it because I didn't really like the flash and low light that you get out of those ports on the 19 uh, C. Uh, but this gun's not bad. I've never really found it to be a, a horribly, you know, recoiling gun or anything like that. But the Gen 5s do offer, you know, that nicer barrel and a few other nicer features. So if you want to check out the Gen 5, just uh, watch our video on that. All right. I've just always been kind of a Gen 3 sort of guy when it comes to Glock 19s. Really Glocks in general. Not too terrible. I mean, as long as I can do my part, it's holding pretty decent accuracy. I mean, for combat use, it's not bad. Let me try a couple of headshots here. Well, that's not the head. There we go. Not bad. I mean, it's definitely accurate if you do your part. Uh, the striker fire mechanism and the, uh, the way that the trigger on this gun is, you know, is, may not necessarily be something that everybody likes. Uh, it's probably something that you have to just check out for yourself. Um, the striker fire system of trigger is definitely something that a lot of companies have copied and sort of copied that, that overall idea. Um, so instead of having like an external hammer, uh, like a 1911 or a more traditional hammer fire pistol, you have an internal striker mechanism. Uh, that's why Glocks get their reputation for being so reliable and everything is because there's a lot less places for dirt and, uh, and dust bunnies and random things to get into the mechanism of the gun, uh, which makes it really, really reliable and uh, just a, kind of, a, I guess, a closed system, if you will, uh, really helps with uh, longevity and, and field use. And that's one of the reasons that Glocks get their, uh, you know, their, their reputation for being so reliable is because of the closed type system. But... As a result, um, the safe action pistol or the safe action trigger mechanism of this pistol does uh, maybe leave maybe a little bit be to be desired on the trigger. Some people don't like the way these triggers break and the way they stage up. I find that they're adequate. Uh, I probably prefer an MMP just a little bit more over a Glock in terms of the trigger. And uh, plus, uh, since the MMP has been getting a lot more popular, there's a ton of aftermarket accessories for the MMP series, just like there is the Glock. And then there's other makers that are making guns. I mean, you look at the H&K VP9, it's basically just a striker fire pistol, very similar to a Glock, very similar to a MMP. It just says H&K on it. But even the H&K VP9s, uh, there's a lot of aftermarket accessories that people are making for those guns. So there is a, an entire cottage industry um, that has sort of surrounded itself uh, around a lot of these, these kind of guns, especially the Glock 19. I mean, you can trick one of these things out to the gills. I mean, you can replace every single part on this gun where it's not even a Glock anymore. So you do have that compatibility if you uh, decide you want to change a trigger around. But this is a stock gun. It's not too bad. <laughs> well, 
the last five shots was the best shooting I did in the entire video, and I stacked five right on top of each other at 15 yards. So the guns will definitely shoot pretty well uh, if you do your part. It just kind of comes down to uh, you know practicing with the gun. Um, I have never picked up a Glock 19 and taken it out, especially if I haven't shot a particular gun in a while. Um, I've never really taken one out and not been able to hit everything I'm aiming at within reason and, to, and have never not felt comfortable to be able to protect myself with this pistol if I needed to. Um, we shot all those rounds there without a single stoppage. Uh, I was shooting the gun a little bit earlier with some wolf ammo and I did get a stoppage. I had a stovepipe uh, in this particular pistol with some wolf. Uh, I'm going to chalk that up to being ammunition related probably. Uh, we did run the, uh, that was a Freedom Munitions 124 grain ball. Uh, we're going to reset the range, clean up, uh, paint over all my crummy groups, and then uh, Chad's going to have a go to, uh, shoot a few rounds here for you. All right, I'm not going to bore you guys too much, but uh, you might be wondering why in the world I'm wearing a wool coat. Well, the weatherman was uh, a little off today. It's supposed to be 70 degrees. It's like 50 out here, and I've been sick, so Eric gave me a wool coat because I didn't come to the range very prepared. <laughs> but uh, I told him, <laughs> we were joking earlier, I said, I feel like an extra from Enemy at the Gates. One of those Russians picking up their Mosins and running into battle, you know. But I've got the wrong gun. But I bet they would like to have they had that. They would have this liked gun. to have had that, yeah. <laughs> they probably could have done some, done some real work with one of these. A Russian with an Austrian pistol. Hmm. But anyways, get over the coat. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm going to shoot this gun a little bit. Uh, like Eric said earlier, I've got it. I don't even remember. I think I've got two or three 19s. I've got a couple of 17s and then two 43s. I, and I've got an old 45 gap too, one of the Glock 38s. And yeah, 17L, I think we both oh, have. Oh yeah, 17L. I mean, you know, I like Glocks. And, you know, I've gotten so used to shooting a, a Glock striker fire trigger, it's, uh, it's a little weird sometimes when, when I pick up like a 1911 or like a match like CZ or something like that with a really short, crisp, single action trigger. It's just, it takes a minute to get used to. And some guns I just can't get used to the trigger on anymore. But I've always been really familiar with a Glock and just the way they feel. They don't fit the hand exceptionally well. They take a little bit of getting used to, you know, to be able to like point it naturally and everything. But I will say like Eric, you know, M&Ps are a lot more comfortable in the hand. There's guns that out, are out there now that, I mean, suffice to say, they probably are better than a Glock, but the thing is, these things are, like Eric said, Honda Civics of the gun world, and they're just a workhorse. They really are. And, uh, I mean, I carried a 19 for the longest time. I still do occasionally in the wintertime when I can just wear some heavier clothing and stuff like that. It depends on where I'm going, but most of the time I just carry the 43 because it's easy to conceal, but always a place for a Glock 19. Let's take a few shots. You got to hide like 100 under that coat. <laughs> I could. This thing goes all the way down to my calves, if you can't tell. This thing is awesome. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Let's see. Eh. Take a minute to get used to those little sights there. Let's see. Take a shot of our little gopher. I'm going for all the small targets. Eric's like wrapping them out. I'm going for the tiny targets. Gopher at like 20 yards. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm having to hold off to the right just a little bit. You don't have your sight pusher with you, do you? I don't. But it's hitting a little bit to the left for me and you both. Yeah. Not could, bad, though. No, could sell to drift them over. Let's aim for that bolt at 12 yards here. <laughs> that orange front on these HDs is really, really easy to pick up. That's kind of why I put those sights on that, yeah, for close range work. I like those better than those True Glows I've got. Yeah. I like that orange 
quite a bit. Yep. Not bad. <laughs> All right. So this is a magazine of our werewolf killing ammo, some of our seal case wolf. This is what Eric had a stoppage with earlier. It was kind of barely pooping the brass out. We'll see. A lot of this wolf, like pistol ammo, a lot of times it's underpowered. So give it a try. Give it a whirl. Let's try yeah, it out and see. Yeah, definitely hitting to the left. Try some sodies. What weight is this, 115? Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's getting out of there pretty good. Maybe it's just been a fluke. All right, yep. I just got one more mag. I'm not gonna bore you guys and shoot quite as much. We know these things will, uh, we know these things will go for quite a while. How Ask do we know we know why. <laughs> All right, let's see, 40 yards. Not bad. Yeah. Shooting about a pie plate group. Well, except for those misses. All right, 75. Well, <laughs> they're all going in about a 20 inch spread. Shooting this thing a lot further than you probably would really need to. If you can't tell, we like Glocks. But it's funny, <laughs> you know, Eric mentioned in the intro, you know, we were going back and looking at old video and stuff. It's like, have we ever done a video on a Glock 19? Like, I don't know. So you search on the channel and there's nothing about a Glock 19. We've never just done just a fun range video on these things, but they are wonderful guns. And uh, like I said, I wouldn't own several of them if they were not good guns. Um, there's plenty of law enforcement and you know military that use Glocks. So, I mean, if that's any testament to the quality and you know ruggedness and dependability and reliability of these firearms, I don't know what else there is to, to prove, but like Eric said, there's a ton of aftermarket accessories stuff for these guns, but one word of caution. When you get into some of the crazy light ghost connectors and all that, like three and a half pound race triggers and all this kind of stuff, you're starting to kind of uh, get out of, you know, the, the safety sphere there with all the internal safeties and like the, the, the plunger like drop safety and everything for the striker and all that mess. And stuff just isn't going to work right. You're going to have to tune the gun and there's going to have to be all sorts of weird things that you're going to have to do to it to get it to run reliably. I would not recommend doing that on a gun that you're going to carry. I mean, if you want to replace like a connector or something, go with like a four and a half or a five pound like ghost connector or something. That's what I put in one of the guns that I carry all the time. And uh, it smooths out the trigger pull a little bit. It does give it just a little bit less over travel, but I've never had a problem with that thing. But I've heard of guys like having these guns in holsters with all the race components and stuff in there. They drop it and what happens? Accidental discharge. In the holster loaded, just hitting the, hitting the ground. You know, just because you're kind of defeating some of those safety mechanisms inside. So that's one thing that I would not recommend is, you know, messing around with the springs and everything in there. It's, they're, they're a particular weight for a reason. And we might do another video with that maybe in the future and just kind of talk about some of those components, stuff like that, and why you probably shouldn't use them or what the best scenario is to use them in. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're just out here having a little bit of fun with the Glock 19. Got a little dirty. So a little trip in the ultrasonic will do that thing pretty well. But stay tuned, guys. We've got a lot more on the way, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. See ya.